Welcome to Fountain Heritage. It's great to have you join us for this service today where we will celebrate the fact that God has not left us on our own. God has come by the person of the Holy Spirit to be with us forever. You might uh, be feeling right now uh, at home fairly isolated. Many of you may be feeling lonely this past year. Well, we're going to encourage each other today that we are never alone. God is with us by his Holy Spirit. And we can encourage each other as the church being together in that truth, in that life, in that power that the Holy Spirit brings us this day as we celebrate Pentecost. Let's pray as we start our service. O oh Lord, open our lips and our mouths should proclaim your praise. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and clothe us with power from on high. Alleluia. Blessed are you, sovereign God, overflowing in love, with Pentecost dawns the age of the Spirit. Now the flame of heaven lies in every believer. Strong and weak, women and men tell out your word. The young receive visions, the old receive dreams. With the new wine of the Spirit, they proclaim your reign of love. Amid the birth pangs of the new creation, the way of light is made known. Source of freedom, giver of life, blessed are you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we start our service, we're going to confess our sins because the Spirit of Truth will convict the world of guilt about sin righteousness and judgment we have grieved the holy spirit and so in sorrow we confess our sins merciful and gracious god our hearts cry out to you to make us whole again even as we celebrate that you have come to dwell within us we have sinned against you and abandoned your commandments. We've been jealous, possessive, ambivalent, impulsive. We have not heeded your word, and when we have not cherished your covenant, help us to glorify you in all times and all places, as our souls thirst for your living water. Quench our need, Satisfy our love that we may come back to you and be sent forth to fill the world with your mercy and grace in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, who is at work within us. Amen. God, the Father of mercies, has reconciled the world to himself through the death and resurrection of his son, Jesus Christ, not counting our trespasses against us, but sending his Holy Spirit to shed abroad his love among us by the ministry of reconciliation entrusted by Christ to his church. Receive his pardon and his peace to stand before him in his strength alone this day and evermore. Amen.
reading today is from Acts chapter 2, starting at verse 1. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Now there were, staying in Jerusalem, God-fearing Jews from every nation under heaven. When they heard this sound, a crowd came together in bewilderment because each one heard their own language being spoken. Utterly amazed, they asked, Aren't all these who are speaking Galileans? Then how is it that each of us hears in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, residents of Mesopotamia, Judea and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phygra and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya near Cyrene, visitors from Rome, both Jews and converts to Judaism, Cretans and Arabs, we hear them declaring the wonders of God in our own tongues. Amazed and perplexed, they asked each other, What does this mean? This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. What does this mean? That's the question what they asked when they heard the sound of this rushing wind when they saw the sight of these tongues of fire on the apostles. What does this mean? And this I want to share with you because the Holy Spirit coming in power and glory is good news now for you and for me. I wonder whether you ever feel lonely. I remember before I was married, um, I lived, I was working for a, a, a local church uh, a, f- a few miles away. And uh, I lived in, I, 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 I stayed at a, uh, uh, at a house where I was lodging. And there was one particular day, and I think it's the only day in my life when I literally spoke to no one. And it really had an impact on me. I remember it to this day very vividly. At the end of the day thinking, I've literally not spoken to anyone today. For me, that was a one-off in my life. But for many people, that might not be a one-off. According to the uh, Office of National Statistics in Just a few years ago, 16, 17, there were 5% of adults in England who reported feeling lonely often or always. That's 9 million people in our country. And that means it's likely that there are a number of us now listening and in our parish who are often or always feeling lonely. That's incredibly sad thing. Around 200,000 older people have not had a conversation with a friend or relative in more than a month. That would include, I'm sure, some of us locally. And do you know what the loneliest age group is? You'd think it was old people. It's not. It's young Adults aged 16 to 24 reported feeling lonely more often than those in older age groups, particularly younger renters with little uh, trust or sense of belonging to the area. Loneliness is not an old person problem at all. And for many of us, we might have experienced that in the past or experiencing it now as young people, you might be experiencing loneliness in your life. In a world where we've never been more connected through our phones, through computers, loneliness has not gone away. In a bustling world where you can be seeing dozens of people all the time passing, 
And yet we can feel lonely in amongst so many people in the village or town or, or workplace you are. You can still feel lonely, many people do. What is God's answer to that? Mark Robson, Chief Officer of Age UK Barnet, said, Loneliness can kill. It is proven to be worse for health than smoking 15 cigarettes a day. But it can be overcome and needn't be a factor in older people's lives. Or indeed anyone's lives. Because as Christians we have a more powerful message than Mark Robson, the Chief Officer of the UK, Age UK Barnet. Loneliness can be overcome in the most incredible, amazing and intimate way ever. To not just have friends, family, in the community of the church together, but to have our living, loving, active God in our lives to forever be with us no matter what. Every service at the end, when we have the blessing, I say, may the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with us now and forever. Amen. We say that almost at the end of almost every service, that God would be with us. And Pentecost is the reason God is with us, because his Holy Spirit has come amongst us as his people. When Jesus went back to heaven, uh, the final few times he spoke was recorded for us. And listen to these things that Jesus spoke before he went, uh, was ascended into heaven. He says this, in Matthew, surely I am with you always. I am with you always to the very end of the age in Matthew 28. In John 20, 22, Jesus breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit Then his final words before his ascension to heaven, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you. So in the moment of Jesus' ascension to heaven, yes, and we talked about this last week, do catch up if you can, It's it's, it's, it's on last week's video. Yes, the disciples would have been very, very sad that Jesus was in some ways gone to heaven. But he wasn't gone for long because in a few days later, At Pentecost, Jesus sent his Spirit, his Holy Spirit, from heaven to be with them now and forever. Jesus has never left his people. Surely I am with you to the very end of the age. Jesus has never left his people. Surely Jesus is with us to the very end of the age. 200,000 people have not had a single conversation with any friend or family in the past month. But as Christians, we know that we are never alone. I thought it would be good to spend a few moments reflecting on this. And as I wrote this, my computer uh, started playing this song that I'm going to play now. It's a modern song called Never Once. Perhaps you could reflect on these lyrics as we listen to Never Once Did I Ever Walk Alone. Battle. 
joy our hearts can say Never once did we ever walk alone Carried by your constant grace Held within your perfect peace Never once, no we never walk alone Never once did we ever walk alone Never once did you leave us on our own You are faithful, God, you are faithful Every step we are breathing in your grace Evermore we'll be breathing out your praise You are faithful, God, you are faithful 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 You are not alone. Not only is the church here for you, and we can be with each other, even remotely, God is with you by his Holy Spirit. You are never alone. Get God's presence in your life. The Holy Spirit is God's presence with us. Let me read those words of uh, Pentecost uh, from from chapter 2 again. When the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly, a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to teach in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. The Holy Spirit is not an it. He's not a force. He is a he. He is a person. He is the person that enables us to to know God, because he is God. How amazing is it that when the church can go out and reach out to lonely people in maybe in our parish or villages, we have an amazing message of love and presence, not only with people in the church, but with God himself. Get God's presence in your life. The Holy Spirit is God's presence with us. But also, get Get some help in your life also. The Holy Spirit is our helper. So we see God's always with us by his Spirit. We're never alone. But why else has the Holy Spirit come? Well, the Holy Spirit is both our friend and our helper. And we need a lot of help in our lives. Everyone needs help, no matter what situation that you're in. There's so many things that we can't do on our own. You might need help from doctors. You might need help from teachers. You might need help from builders or painters or, or, or whatever it is. There's, there's tons of people that we need help from. We can't do life on our own. We all need help. And some people who, who perhaps uh, have medical issues perhaps uh, uh, struggling mentally, maybe realise that they need help more than the rest of us. And in so so doing, I pray that you might realise that you need God's help in your life also. We can't do it on our own. Get some help in your life. The Holy Spirit is our helper. But we can also get some understanding in your life also. The Holy Spirit helps us to 
understand God. Some of you might speak uh, other languages. And I know from being in other countries where I can't understand the language, how incredibly difficult, incredibly frustrating and, uh, and challenging that can be. You want to ask a question, but you don't know how. You want to talk to someone, but you can't, and it can be incredibly isolating not being able to communicate such a basic way in which we as huma humanity sort of build relationships through communication. The Holy Spirit helped the disciples uh, and the, apost the apostles to speak in a way that people could understand in the most miraculous way at Pentecost. They had uh, Jews and uh, people who were converted to Judaism. Some have been Jews their whole life, some were converted. They come from all over the world to this place. And when they heard this rushing wind uh, and they saw tongues of they, they sort of gather around and the apostles are teaching and everyone can understand in their own language from the place in the world which they came from. The Holy Spirit brought a miraculous way that they could understand God. Verse 4, all of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. So it's true that God in most miraculous ways can bring understanding of himself to the different peoples of the world with their different languages. And that can happen in miraculous ways through, through uh, the apostles here or through the gift of tongues. In different ways, it can happen miraculously. But it can also happen in all more ordinary ways, ordinary ways which is actually no less miraculous. I can tell someone about Jesus. I can explain that Jesus is King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I can explain about how he had to die on the cross for our sin, that he was raised for us so that we can have salvation, forgiveness and hope. I can explain all these things, but it doesn't mean that someone will understand it. The Spirit helps bring that understanding to know God. He can change our hearts and minds to know Jesus better. Without the Spirit, we couldn't truly know God. And so both through miraculous prophecy and the more ordinary understanding of God's Word that, you know, I preach as we hear the Bible and explain it, the Holy Spirit opens eyes to see God's truth. My words are just words. It is the Holy Spirit who brings the Word of life to light in people's minds and hearts. The Word of God is brought to life in people by the Holy Spirit. Ezekiel 36, 26 says this, I will give you a new heart, a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. Without God's help, by his spirit, we will be ignorant and lost. It doesn't matter who you are, how clever you are, how able you are. That personal, personal knowledge of our Saviour Jesus Christ comes by the Holy Spirit, bringing knowledge, bringing life bringing light, bringing salvation to us. It is because of the Spirit that everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Get some understanding in your life by the Holy Spirit. But finally, get God's power in your life also. The Holy Spirit enables us and helps us by bringing God's power in our life. This week, uh, in, in our parish, we've had the most incredible wind. It's been incredibly windy uh, on Thursday, Friday, and uh, these gusts just come along out of out of nowhere sometimes. And um, 
you know, the, the stuff on the garden was just being blown away. Trees, strong trees, just cowering, bowing in this wind. So strong was it. The Holy Spirit comes at Pentecost like a rushing wind. You can't see him, but you can see his effects in the most incredibly powerful ways. We need power in our life. We need someone else to enable us and help us to do what we need to do. When I used to work as a uh, blacksmith years ago, and uh, there would be often times when you have to work together uh, to work. One of you might have a chisel or something with the, with the metal, and another uh, uses a sledgehammer to whack down on the chisel. And as the young apprentice, <laughs> I was always the sledger. My boss would hold the, hold the chisel and I would whack it again and again, sometimes all day, just whacking. Absolutely exhausting by the end of the day. I'm almost falling off. You couldn't do it on your own with just a chisel. You need some power from someone else to, to, to bring power to the tool that you have. You can't do it on your own. Well, the Holy Spirit brings the power of God in our lives to equip us that we would be the, the, the people and the tools that God has made us to be. So that in the way that you live, you can have God's power in your life. In the way that you act, you can have God's power in your life. In the way that you serve, you can have God's power in your life. I wonder whether you sometimes feel weak or frail. I think a lot of us over this past difficult year have felt very vulnerable and weak in the way that we've not been able to uh, do or protect ourselves through this difficult year. Well, the Holy Spirit can bring help and power in your life. Romans 8, 26 says this, In the same way, the Spirit helps us in our weakness. We do not know how we ought to pray, what we ought to pray for, but the Spirit himself intercedes for us through wordless groans. Out of our weakness, the Holy Spirit in power helps us to pray, to relate to God. The Spirit in power brings spiritual gifts also, miraculous gifts, gifts of teaching, gifts of administration. I wonder whether you think, do you ever worry that God can't use you? Well, worry not. Do you ever think that God, uh, you, you don't have any gifts that God can use? Well, don't. Ask the Holy Spirit to equip you and empower you to serve Jesus in the capacity that you have. And the Holy Spirit helps us in power to grow into a godly character as well. Galatians 5.22, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I wonder whether you ever feel controlled by feelings of anger, or controlled by feelings of resentment, or sadness, or sin, or lust, or hate. Ask the Holy Spirit to empower you in your lives to live out the fruit of the Spirit, that you might taste and see that the Lord is good in the way that you live, in the way that you are, in the way that you act. You can have power in your life. Power in your weakness. Power for godliness. Power in your gifts. The Holy Spirit has not left you, but empowers you. The Holy Spirit brings God's presence in your life. The Holy Spirit helps you in your life. The Holy Spirit brings understanding in your life. The Holy Spirit brings power in your life that you might be the person that God made you to be, that you might become that person, that you would grow in godliness, in gifting, 
in life as Christians. Without the Holy Spirit, we could not know God or live for him, but he has not left us alone. He has not left you. He has come to you to bring you life to bring you light, to bring you salvation, to bring you gifts, to bring you help. You are never alone. God is powerfully with and at work in his people. So let's pray now that God would come by his Holy Spirit to help and empower us in our lives. Let's pray. Father God, we praise you and thank you that you have not ever left us alone. You came in the person of Jesus Christ, most incredibly. And in his ascension, you still have never left us alone because you have sent your Holy Spirit. And we pray now, come Holy Spirit, come into our lives, that we would know you, love you, follow you in the most incredible and amazing ways. Come Holy Spirit, fill us again. As we listen to your word, fill us with your spirit. As we worship you in majesty, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your refreshing, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your renewing, Fill us with your spirit. As we long for your equipping, fill us with your spirit. As we long for your empowering in our lives, fill us with your spirit. Come, Holy Spirit, we pray. In Jesus' name, Amen. And the special collect prayer for today. Let us pray that the Spirit would work through our lives to bring Christ to the world. God, who at this time taught the hearts of your faithful people by sending to them the light of your Holy Spirit, grant us by the same Spirit to have a right judgment in all things and evermore rejoice in his holy comfort through the merits of Jesus Christ, our Saviour, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Being made by the power of the Holy Spirit, as our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. We well, thank you for joining us today for our service here at Fountain Heritage. It's been uh, wonderful that you can join us. And uh, we look forward to, uh, hopefully, uh, if you are local, seeing you in person at uh, Fant 9.30, Airridge 11.15, Festival Church outside at 5 when you can. Uh, we, we'd love to get to know you. So uh, if, if you are local, do uh, come in person. We might encourage each other in person if and when you can and, and is safe for you. Let me say a final blessing. May the Spirit who hovered over the waters when the world was created breathe into you the life he gives. May the Spirit who overshadows the Virgin when the eternal Son came among us make you joyful in the service of the Lord. May the Spirit who set the church on fire on the day of Pentecost Bring the world alive with the love of the risen Christ and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen.